Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, I thought I'd come on here, and um, the reason I'm coming on is I'm cuddled up here. It's a chilly day, and um, um, anyways, I'm in my little bed sheets, so I wanted to talk about, um, I wanted to talk about the whole scenario situation, what happened with Tasha last night. Um, give my thoughts about it. I don't know if you guys, I'm sure a lot of you guys that watch me probably watch what happened last night. I didn't watch it live, but I heard about it. Uh, Our Terry was talking about it stuff, you know. And, uh, but anyways, I just wanted to give my thoughts. Um, last night there was an incident, uh, with Tasha, I'm sure most of you guys saw it, and, um, I'm just gonna kind of close my eyes and talk to you guys here, but, um, mm, I'm kind of comfortable cuddly in the rig, but, uh. In my opinion, last night, the situation with Tasha, um, I believe that she didn't look like she was drunk. I don't believe she was on any sort of drugs. I believe she was attacked demonically. Because if you go back and watch the video, I'm sure I heard a demonic voice around 34 minutes and 26 seconds timestamp. <clears throat> and people were saying they're hearing noises and uh, uh, hearing noises coming from the van and stuff like that. But at 34 minutes and 26 seconds, you can hear a voice saying it's cold or something within that nature and that was an EVP an electronic voice phenomenon and whether there's something planted in her van from the FBI or government is tracking her I don't think so I think that's a long shot I think that um Whatever voice that was that came at 34 minutes and 26 seconds, um, that was a demonic spirit. It was, the voice was very, very close to the microphone of the phone. Even with there being a lot of road noise in the video from the highway and stuff of that nature, uh, there was nobody there next to her that produced that voice. So the only explanation is this electronic voice phenomenon that was connected to what was going on in the van. So I'm a very spiritual person and I know that Tasha's not a drug user. She doesn't do drugs. I don't think she's crazy or mentally disabled like people say does she get a disability check yes but I think Tasha is a smart person and she could hold a job and she doesn't really need a disability check now does she have some mental problems she probably does um, have some mental problems and wow I got 28 people watching 
Now, does she have some mental problems? Is she schizophrenic? I don't believe so. I've heard voices, too, in the past that come out of nowhere, that come from another dimension. So that voice came from another dimension. So I believe Tasha was being attacked by a demonic entity. And this demonic entity manifested inside of her van somehow in the electrical system um, and also you could clearly hear the audible voice at 34 minutes and 26 seconds saying something like it's cold so I just want to give my two thoughts on it other people were hearing noises now the one thing that um, like I said I don't think I could hear it. Yeah. Well, I heard it at 3426. So now <clears throat> does Tasha have some mental problems? Of course. Not that any mental problems related to being trans. I mean, a lot of people are trans and I guess it's a mental hormonal thing, but the mental problems I think that she has I don't believe they stem from being trans per se, but it probably has uh, maybe something to do with being trans, but also an identity crisis within herself of who she really is or wants to be. But she has a lot of turmoil with her family, toxic family, and... Um, Who knew that demons could get cold? Well, yeah, I mean, that wasn't her voice. Okay? So, does Tasha have a mental problem? Yes, she does. Um, is it related to being trans? Partly. Um, and is her mental problems related to her upbringing and environment, the toxic relationship she's had with her family? That, I guess, was related for them not accepting her being trans, but it's a culmination of things. Do I believe that Tasha deserves a disability check or a rich life? People like that? No. I think they can work and hold a job, and they're not physically or mentally, um, like, they don't have autism or severe autism or Down syndrome where they can't have to get a job. And there's people who even have Down syndrome and autism and they're throwing away garbage at McDonald's or doing some menial tasks like that. So, Tosh is a very high-functioning, mentally disabled person. Um, she's a high-functioning person. And she can do a lot of things that people can do that are not disabled. So, in my opinion, people on her mental level, does she need mental medication? Does she need prayer? Probably, probably not. Probably not all depends on which way she wants to go. With that, I don't see her as being a spiritual religious person. Does she need any mental medication? Possibly. That's be determined by a psychiatrist or psychologist, something of that nature. But um, I believe she can easily hold a job and make money and not have to be given a disability check or declared disabled by the government, but in this day and age of communism that we live in, almost anybody can get a check. Because like I said, she's intelligent in a lot of ways more than the average person. She's above average intelligence. She's a handy person, and she's book smart, law smart, legal smart, and mechanical smart. So, again, do I believe she was drunk? No. Do I believe she was hearing and seeing and feeling things? Yes. But I don't believe that that was dealt that had anything to do with her mental state. Um, I think that there was a spiritual phenomenon going on. And... Um, And there were voices and there was energy and, and it felt very negative, toxic. 
and maybe her own mind produced it. It could be that her own mind produced it. You know, your own mind can produce those kind of things. It could be something from another dimension. But is she targeted by the government or her family or something like that? Is it a technology box, tech box that's in there that's messing her mind up? No, I don't believe that the government is after somebody like her. She's a small fish, and she's pretty much harmless. So I just want to put my two cents in. Um, I think it's a attack. This either was a demonic attack from a demonic entity or entities, or it's her own mind, her own toxic negative energy producing this negative energy. Your own mind can produce negative energy. And um, did you see the post that she made the day before that was full of crazy talk? Yeah, I've, I've, I don't read those long posts because it's all about the family and legality and all that. So, um, I don't think that her family is after her. I think she's had a toxic relationship with them, whatever the case is. I don't follow that because it's all a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but it's a lot of toxic energy. So, like I said, maybe she was attacked by a demon because the demon knew that she was in a weak place in her mind. That's a possibility. Or her own negative energy, her own negative toxic energy, because Tasha... When I met her, um, when she gets drunk, she'll be, she's a chain smoker and she gets drunk and she gets into this, well, it's kind of like, for example, let me compare Tasha and Norm. Norm, when I met him in person, I didn't realize what kind of person he was, but he gets, he's a chain smoker. And he gets drunk and high. And when he gets into that mode, he just goes on the internet and gives people money. And he gets a joy out of it. Kind of like gambling or an addiction. And Tasha's the same way. She's a chain smoker. And she's a weed smoker. And she's an alcohol drinker. So when she gets really, really buzzed out on that, she gets into this very depressing talk about suing the government, suing the cops, suing her family, and it gets very, very, very sad and negative. And that's due to, like you say, a combination of things um, that are altering her brain. Whether it's the weed smoking, I don't know if she, I don't know if I saw her smoke weed. I don't believe she smokes weed. I think she just smokes cigarettes and drinks, but uh, Norm smokes weed. So she just, I just seen her smoke and drink. So in my opinion, like I said, it is what it is. I think it was a, a demonic entity or entities attacking her because they know she was at her low point mentally with dealing with this thing with her mom and the courts. Or, like I said, her own negative mind energy created these voices and this negative radiation or whatever was coming, emanating from the van. And it was a spiritual mental attack upon her that led to being a physical attack because if she was feeling radiation or being shocked, she was feeding negative electrical energy from the spiritual side because uh, a lot of people don't know this but the original name for God is Il, translated to Elohim, which are more than one gods, the ones that came down and gene spliced the monkeys with man and made human beings, Enki and Enlil and all that, the Anunnaki. So the uh, name for, generic name for God in ancient Sumerian, Assyrian is Il, one being more than one God, or the sons of God, the Elohim, the Anunnaki that came down and gene splice humans, and Eel, the electric Eel, Eel, 
eel, the god eel, is electric. It's an electric god. That's what eel stands for, eel. And so <clears throat> it's all interconnected. So I heard voices on her video. I slowed it down and listened again, and it was spooky. Well, yeah, I think if somebody needs to take that video and slow it down and bring the volume up and amplify those voices, that would be interesting because there was definitely weird noises coming from the van. And if you, if somebody who's an audio expert, technology guy, can break that video down and bring up turn down the background noise and bring up those voices, then uh, there's probably going to be a lot of electronic voice phenomenon in there. Again, that's, I believe, that energy is emanating from another dimension, but also is part and parcel with her negative mind, toxic mind, toxic energy that she's putting out that's connecting with the toxic negative energy on the other side. So it's a combination probably of both. Um, what's he saying? What transpired after the stream ended? I have no idea. She's 5150. They're probably going to hold her for three days. And my prediction is their son is saying that they got the dog because I don't know, whatever. So, um, I, in my opinion, um, the weird thing about this whole situation was, is why she chose to park on the side of the highway, get out of the vehicle, leave the doors open, drop her keys, get out without her shoes on, um, and walk away from the van and also videotape this and incriminate herself. Um, I don't understand what the point of that was. That was not a very wise thing to do. Uh, she was definitely being spiritually, electronically attacked by this entity or entities. Um, and maybe there was a negative electrical shock in that van. Maybe it felt like the van was going to burn up or... Uh, there was radiation or electrical energy being released and it was shocking her body or making her feel like she's going to like being electrocuted. That's how negative it was. But in that case, I think what she should have did was, was just uh, get off the highway, park in a safe place, get away from the van, not videotape it, pray, pray to God and it will go away. I believe. Um, so I don't think she's being technologically attacked by the government. Again, she's a small fish. Why would they care about her, you know? And um, it was a spiritual negative attack produced by her own negative toxic energy mind connecting with the dark side and conjuring up this negative uh, uh, demons and stuff. So I had something demonic happen to me today myself. Let's just put it this way. Uh, um, I just want to put this out there. I got a message on my phone. Um, and it was one of the scariest messages I've ever seen. And uh, it wasn't from a YouTube troll. Um, yeah, the voice. And I had something negative happen to me this morning on my phone. Let's put it this way. I got a message. I'm not going to... I don't know from who it was. I have no idea. It was a number that I've never seen. I got a text message. And this wasn't a YouTube troll, and it had nothing to do with YouTube or Facebook or nothing like that. But it was a message, uh, and the message claimed uh, something about me wasting the time of a of a girl, a working girl escort on the phone and that this individual was supposedly um, 
from a, uh, and like I said, they claim to be part of a group, let's just say a group. And they sent a picture of this guy um, who had his neck slashed. And uh, they said that I wasted a girl's time on the phone or something. And they said that if I don't pay the money, that I would pay the price. Or my family would pay the price. Again, I don't even know if this is a spam message to extort money from people or if this is legitimate. But it was terrifying. And it was one of the most terrifying texts I've ever received in my life. And it was broken English being used. And... Um, it was pretty terrifying. Uh, I don't know. And like I said, it, is, it has nothing to do with YouTube or YouTube trolls or nothing like that. And I don't even know if it's legitimate. It could be real. It could be legitimate. It could be not. But I'm going to pray about it because it's pretty, pretty crazy. And I didn't do anything wrong and I didn't bother anybody or waste anybody's time. Uh, so I don't know if this is just a mass message being sent out or... If this is um, one of these escorts that I talked to on the phone that's just trying to uh, intimidate me to get money or whatever the deal is, but it's pretty terrifying when somebody sends you a message saying that you wasted a girl's time on the phone and if you don't pay up, we're going to be after you and your family. And they said, look at the results of what happened to somebody that messed with us, some guy with his uh, throat slit. I mean, it was just some crazy stuff. I mean, I've never seen something like that. And uh, I don't even know who this person is or who this number is or what the deal is. But it's quite terrifying. I don't believe it's legitimate. I don't believe that uh, if somebody wants to take you out, they're not going to take you out for something like that just for talking to a girl on the phone or whatever. Or, uh, or uh, I believe it's a... It's, um, it's a it's a prank, uh, not a prank. I believe it's probably a, a, a an intimidation tactic for one of these girls that I might have talked to, that's trying to, on the phone, that wants to scare somebody to get some money out of them somehow. Uh, and it's not legitimate. I don't believe it's legitimate. I'm not taking it as legitimate, but I'll still pray about it. But that's pretty terrifying. I've never got something like that. <clears throat> But I don't believe it's legitimate, let's put it that way, because I didn't really do anything wrong. And nobody would go to those kind of extremes just because you talked to a girl on the phone or whatever the deal is or didn't uh, agree on a price or whatever the deal is. And this message actually has nothing to do with Mexico because these girls that I called on the phone were all pretty much escorts in the United States. So... Um, but uh, this message is claiming that they have affiliation or organization with a group in Mexico. But again, I believe it's just a intimidation tactic, and I don't, I don't believe it to be a real legitimate threat. But I'm just saying it's a scary message. And um, um, it is what it is. It's actually from a from an app. It's not even a legitimate number. It's from a from an app, one of these free. Uh, text app uh, numbers. So, like I said, I believe it's an intimidation tactic um, uh, that's being used, uh, I guess, by one of these girls to get money from uh, me or anybody else to intimidate. And there's a lot of girls out there that try to get money from you in a lot of different ways. So, we'll talk about that later, but... Uh, there's a lot of girls in Mexico that sometimes they want to get paid for the conversation or they want you to buy them a $10 drink and they split the money with the club or uh, they're always trying to get money out of you. They know that you're American and you got money on the Mexican side. I mean, even in America, it's the same thing. Girls try to use guys for money all the time. But intimidation tactics sometimes are used. In Mexico, I've ran into some pretty flaky people on the street that were trying to pimp some girls out and um, and they kind of give me bad looks or they try to not get out of my way when I'm walking down the stairs or flag you down and it's just, it's just flaky intimidation tactics um, 
And uh, most people in Mexico are great, but there's still there's going to be bad apples everywhere you go. There's some people out there that are hosting the streets that are up to something, up to up to flaky stuff. And uh, those people you got to stay away from, and they're pretty, pretty, very, very easy to identify because most people in Mexico are great actually. But there's a few out there that are um, shysters, and uh, those are the ones that you want to stay away from. You you could know them right away by the way they act and talk. They really give themselves out. They're not very smooth shysters. So, but anyways, that's something demonic that happened to me or weird. But getting back to Tasha, um, um, this is my opinion about the whole situation. Um, in my opinion, um, She's going to get out probably in three days or 48 hours, whatever it is. She's going to get her van back. I feel sorry for her. I hope you guys help her out on GoFundMe or PayPal to get her van out. Because when I got had arrested for that a little thing not showing my ID, uh, I got money back, but it was 270 to hold my van at the tow shop. And then they charge you like 35 bucks a day storage. So it's probably going to cost her... If they're going to charge her about 270 let's just say, give or take, and 30 bucks a day, it's kind of going to be anywhere between three to $400 to get her van out of the of the uh, tow lot. So I hope people give her that money. And in my opinion, what's going to happen, in my opinion, I don't understand why the cops took her in. Uh, they said she was barefooted. She was walking out on the street. Um... You know, um, I don't understand what her deal was. In other words, I don't understand what the purpose of her. She wasn't in her right frame of mind also, I don't believe. But what was the purpose of parking the van on the side of the road on the highway, getting out and going alive? Nothing good is going to come out of that because people are going to call the cops. So uh, I don't understand what the point of all that was. You know, I don't, I don't think I've been attacked by demons and prayed and they left. So, um, I don't think that she made the right decision by going live. I don't think she made the right decision by parking her van on the side of the, um, freeway. I don't think that, uh, I think she could at least got into a safer place. Let's put it that way. And, um, and that's the thing. Very, very odd very very odd occurrence we've never seen it happen before with her but uh, that's pretty much what I have to say about what happened I believe that she'll get the van back she'll be back on YouTube and I think she's going to try to sue the cops because she's always talking about suing the cops and not liking cops because she got Baker acted and beat up by cops I guess years ago when her mom wasn't accepting her being a tranny and all that and and that's what her started her hate against cops and law enforcement and all that. She just kept irritating to copy the video and share it out. Yeah. Well, in my opinion, you know, there was something there. Um, and uh, definitely that was out of this world. I think she should have parked in a safer place. I think... If she wanted to go live and document it, that's fine. But doxing her location and herself was not a smart thing to do. Parking on the highway on the side of the road was not a smart thing to do. Uh, and I think that if she would have just parked in a safe place and prayed with you guys live online, she would have been fine. The energy would have went away. It just doesn't just stay there. Because energy on the other side has to dissipate. It can't just stay on our side. So whatever that would end, basically, it's, it can never be a never-ending demonic attack. It it's goes and it stops. So that's my opinion. Well, what would I have done if I was in her situation? I would have pulled over on a safe spot. I would have got away from the negative energy in the van. I would have got down and prayed to Jesus and... It would have been gone. That's it. And I would have moved on about my day. You know? Um, and I think the negative energy is not necessarily coming from the van. It's coming from within her toxic energy. 
and she's connecting with the other toxic energy on the other side of the other realm. So the van is just a van. You know, a van is a van, it's a vehicle. The energy doesn't come from the van. It's probably came from her and then and then it got it got stuck in the van and integrated itself into the van electronically and is using the van as a radiation, a shocking electrocution weapon against Tasha. Whatever negative energy went in the van and the electrical system and was using the van's electrical system to attack Tasha, pretty much. And just the negative electrical energy that comes from this entity from the other side, they bring their own electrical energy and combine it with the van. So, well, you know, negative energy, demonic energy has been known to do a lot of stuff. Poltergeist activity. I don't think it was poltergeist activity, but it was, it was a poltergeist activity to the point where I believe that the negative electrical energy from this entity or entities somehow, and they do get into electrical systems. They get, do get into radio. She talked about the radio being this demon infiltrated the electrical system of her van. It used the batteries, the solar, the wires, the speakers. It, it, it infiltrated into the van and it used the electrical system of the van to use a physical attack on Tasha, not only physically, but spiritually. She was electronically attacked on a physical and spiritual level, and the van was used as a weapon. It was weaponized by this demonic entity, because they can get into electrical systems. And they got into the radio, they got into the electrical system, and they created the buzz, the noise, the radiation, and the uh, negative electrical vibes and use it as a weapon against Tasha. But they can't just continually do that. It's going to end after a certain while. So they infiltrated, the entity infiltrated the electrical system of Tasha's van and used that as a weapon against her. That's exactly what happened. I'm a very spiritual person. I know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the van itself, per se. Um... I have been shocked before. I was in Key West and I almost died where I was next to a restroom and I put my sunglasses on this electrical box and I felt an electrical shock because the box, I guess, wasn't grounded and I thought I was going to die. So I believe, is there an electrical problem with the van? Could a wire be shorted out? Is there an electronic pulse? Is there something wrong with the van itself? It's a possibility. Um, it's a possibility that there's an electrical short problem with the van itself. And at the same time, I believe could be the demon might have damaged the electrical system on Tasha's van or just used it and weaponized it against Tasha. Either or, or both of or the above. You take your pick. Um, <clears throat> but demonic entities uh, can infiltrate not only poltergeist activity opening doors and windows they can infiltrate electrical systems they can get in your phone your computer your solar your batteries your radio etc 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 you know I believe that entities on the other side they're non-physical they're like a radio wave they're there but you can't see it so they can get inside of Wi-Fi they can get inside of a radio signal they can get inside of a television, signal, broadcast, radio. They can get inside of these systems because they're not physical. They're non-physical beings. And they're like there. It's like a radio wave or a Wi-Fi wave. They're there, but you can't see it, but it's there. So it's a combination. Maybe the demon attacked and damaged Tasha's van. Maybe they just used the system to weaponize it against her, either or. There's also electronic voice phenomenon. So I hope someone, someone in the electronic voice phenomenon community needs to take this video and break it down physically and uh, clarify the audio and see what they find in the video. I wish 
she could have got closer to the van and showed people or made people hear what she was feeling or seeing or hearing and it probably would have been better coverage of what happened but um, that's my opinion what was a young when I was a young kid I had one get inside of our TV this stuff really does happen yeah I'm not schizophrenic I'm not mentally disabled I've heard voices before even when my dad was alive, I would hear his voice sometimes screaming at me. I've seen apparitions, full-body apparitions, a Native American chief. I've seen electronic faces. I've seen Inspector Gadget. I've seen these things are real. It's real. They manifest physical. They manifest in the, physically by the looks. Uh, they manifest by voice. They're there. And... Um, they exist. It's it's true. It's real. Um, you know, is it a ghost? Is it a demon? Is it a spirit of a dead human? Could be anything. Is it an a, a, an extraterrestrial? It could be anything. But they exist. It's there. Sometimes your mind produces it, or sometimes you just connect with them on the other side, because part of our being is spiritual too. We're a try. We're a, you know. We have different layers of our of our being, right? Physical, spiritual, and all that. So I believe that this video needs to be taken and sent to someone who specializes in electronic voice phenomenon, that community. Um, and somebody who can really break the audio down and see what other bits and nuggets of audio that they can hear, uh, weird noises or voices or words. Uh, emanating from this video that's my opinion and then break it down from there but anyway that's my point um, as far as the rest of the whole Tasha situation I think what's going on with her family and mom I think I haven't been following it because it's really negative and stressful to listen to but I know she talks about the trust with her mom and all the stuff, the trust fund. And I just, I don't want to follow it because it's really negative. And when I met her, she got really negative with that because she gets drunk and smokes, chain smokes the cigarettes. And then she gets into this whole rant about how her mom screwed her over and the trust fund and how the cops, she was break her acted and beat up for being a tranny. Her mom didn't accept that. And that's what her started her hate for cops and law enforcement because she was beat up and Baker acted and all that for her mom not accepting her beating training whatever that dead deal I don't want to get into it but um, anyways I wish her the best of luck um, in my opinion you know she's going to get her van out I hope people help her to get her van out I wish her the best of luck and I hope she gets the help that she needs I think she needs prayer I think does she need mental medication or not? I don't know. That's up to a psycho psychologist, psychiatrist. But <clears throat> maybe she might need an exorcism. Maybe her van might need an exorcism. Maybe she needs some prayer. Maybe she needs to get right with God. <clears throat> but at the same time, I believe it's a spiritual attack more than anything else. Like I said, emanating from her own mind or connecting with the other side because her she is negative. Uh, there's a lot of negative stuff about her mind, and uh, I hope that she gets some spiritual healing. Uh, in my opinion, what's going to happen to the dog? Um, I'm going to say this, um, and I haven't said this before, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Um, um, I don't want to reveal something. But I'm just going to say this, that um, I don't believe that um, she should have that dog because I think the dog is not getting a good quality life in that van. And um, in my opinion, let's put it this way, I'm not going to get into details, but I've seen her um, be pretty mean to that dog. Uh, and I won't say, I'm not going to get into details, but she doesn't. Sometimes she doesn't treat the dog very well. And I just think the dog is better off uh, with someone else to take care of that dog. Someone who has a house, backyard, stuff like that. 
children and stuff like that and uh, just to get a better quality of life for the dog um, I don't think that uh, she deserves to keep that dog and I hope that I don't want the dog to be put sleep or put in the way. I, li I love that dog. I love Cookie. She's a sweet dog. But I don't believe that Tasha is capable financially, mentally, or physically to be able to take care of that dog like the way it needs to be taken care of. So I hope that the dog can be taken by someone else, her family, a friend, or someone else is going to adopt the dog and take care of the dog. Because um, I don't think she's capable of taking care of that dog properly. That's just my opinion. And uh, I've seen her not treat the dog well in some instances. I'm not going to get into details, but uh, that's just my opinion. So I, have, I hope out of this whole situation that, uh, that that dog is given or taken care of someone else on a permanent basis. That's just my opinion. I know she's going to get her van back and everything and live her life. And nobody's perfect, but... I'm just giving my opinion of what I think about the whole situation, you know. And um, I'm really concerned about the dog, actually, um, a lot, because I just don't believe the dog is getting the the life that it needs and, and deserves. And I believe somebody else can take care of that dog properly. I don't believe that she should have any, any pet living the way that she lives in that van. I don't think it's a, a productive positive, conducive environment for an animal, whether it's a dog, cat, or any other animal. That's just my opinion. Now, if she was mentally more all there, she had a big class C, and she treated her pets well, of course, but I, I just don't think she's in that mental state right now, and I don't think it's a good idea. This is my opinion. I'm putting it out for what I believe and what I think. So... <clears throat> I don't have anything else to say, guys, but I've been watching the situation, and um, I think she's going to try to sue the cops and say she was wrongfully taken in and all this. And um, But what was the cop to do? I think that um, they made the decision. Um, they never really went up there to figure out what was going on with the van, and they just realized that Tasha didn't have her shoes on, and she's walking in and out of the road, and they don't want to be held liable for just letting her go and hurting herself or hurting the van or hurting the dog or whatever. Uh, I was thinking to myself, if the dog got out loose, it would have got on the highway and got ran over and killed. That would have been crazy, but thank God she had the dog on a leash and walked it out and all that. And um, But the cops had to do what they had to do from a legal standpoint to protect themselves legally, and they saw a person that was mentally not all there for whatever reason, whether it's mental, spiritual, and they had to do what they had to do to protect their jobs and their livelihoods and their responsibilities. And they baker acted her, took her in, impounded a van. They did what they had to do on the legal side of things. And maybe it was a good thing for her to get baker acted because maybe she does need some help. But I don't think that help that she needs is going to be from a psychiatrist or psychologist. I think she needs spiritual help. I think she needs to get an exorcism probably or, um, you know, she needs spiritual help. She needs to get right with God. And uh, I don't think that any uh, mental medications would be a good thing. Um, that, that whole situation scenario in America is all played out with people getting these mental meds and video game geeks and getting SSI checks. You know, I think she needs to get right with God and get spiritual and pray and get right and let all this negative energy go with her, with her mom and family and all that kind of stuff. But that's pretty much what happens. Uh, I guess her son posted on her YouTube and says that they found the van and they're going to get it out and they found the dog and they got the dog out. So, um, I know that she still talks to her son, not that much here and there. And her son lives with the ex, uh, with the woman that she had the kid with, with, the, with her mom, with the ex-girlfriend or whatever. She's never married. So it is what it is. 
Um, it was a very, very uh, bone chilling, scary video experience. Um, that's my thoughts about it. And when people were mentioning the timestamps and the voices, and when I heard that legitimate voice, I think it was saying it's cold. I think that's what I heard it say two words it's cold, something like that. That was pretty bone chilling. He couldn't produce that kind of voice. She didn't produce that violent kind of voice. And she was by herself. She was down in an embankment. It was two in the morning, whatever it was. And that noise, that voice didn't come out of the radio of a car. She didn't make that voice. And that was a electronic voice phenomenon. Now, was that energy voice emanating from her own mind, negative energy? Was it an actual entity? I believe it was an, uh, it was an entity uh, that, like I said, attacked her van's electrical system and used that as a, uh, like an electronic shocker to shock her, like she's getting electrocuted or something like that, used her van's electrical system to attack her physically, to attack her physical flesh. And also with the voices and, 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 uh, and all the noises, that was also to startle her mentally and spiritually. So it was scary. It was scary. It wasn't pretty to watch. But I pray for her in Jesus' name, and I wish her the best of luck, and I hope she can get right with God and get spiritually cleansed and let all this toxic negative energy go with her mom and family and all that and move on, you know. That's pretty much all I have to say, guys. That's my two cents about it. Um, I hope people take this video and distribute it and whatever people have to say, they have to say. I know they redistribute it. If you got a comment, you can leave a comment on this video here. But if people take this video and put it on YouTube um, and comment, uh, I'll, I'll watch and see what you guys have to say, whatever the deal is, you know. But uh, I got a platform. This is what I think. But... Um, these are my thoughts, and I'm sure some people are going to agree and some people are not, but these are my thoughts of the whole situation. So uh, that's pretty much all I got to say, folks. Uh, um, as far as the trolls making videos about me, uh, Lucy up there in Canada, uh, you can make all the videos you want about me. Number one, you're not funny, Lucy. And... Your life seems really boring up there in Canada in the cold. You don't go out and do nothing. You don't show content. And you're always bitter and you're not enjoying your life. And um, you can make all the negative videos you want about me, Lucy. But the only thing in your life, there's nothing interesting in your life. Living in a house in cold Canada, no boyfriend, no husband. Living with a cat, lounging around at home. And uh, just coming online and hating on people. There's nothing exciting about your life. And uh, I don't know why you care about what I do. But I know one thing. I'm happier than you are. Uh, because El Paso, Texas is a great place. Sunshine, warmth, good food, good people, good looking women. And I'm enjoying my life. And I'm not concerned about what you're doing in your life. So I don't know why you're concerned about what I'm doing in my life, Lucy. Because I don't talk about you and I don't care what you do because I'm not interested in your life. I'm not interested in a woman who lives in Canada. I'm not interested in a woman who's got a cat. I'm not interested in a woman who's not friendly, who can't cook, uh, or who doesn't show herself on camera. I'm not interested in you. I don't hate you. I don't have to agree with your life. I'm not interested in, in your life in any way, shape, or form. I don't know why you're interested in mine. We have nothing in common. I'm not a cat person. I don't like boring, cold Canada. And I don't go online hating on people and watching other people's videos and, and trying to put them down or whatever. I don't care what you do. I don't hate you, Lucy. And I, I just, you're irrelevant to me. I'm not interested in you and your life. Uh, on how you live your life. I'm not interested in your constant. I'm not interested in you. I don't hate you. I have nothing against you. And I could care less what you do. Um, I don't watch your content and I don't watch you. 
I don't know why you watch me, and I don't know why you care what I do, because we have nothing in common. Nothing in common, zero. You have no RV, Lucy. You have no sex drive. You don't travel. You're a boring North American woman, like most American women are boring and Canadian. Now, there are great Canadian women out there. The great Canadian women that are out there are the ones who are in Vancouver, British Columbia, living in their vans, like Just Incredible. The ones that are French Canadian from Montreal, Canada, and and Quebec City, Canada, who come down with their husbands in these beautiful wide body camper vans like the Pleasure Ways and Leisure Travels and Road Treks. Those are great women. There's a lot of great women in Canada that are nomads that have camper vans, especially the French Canadians in Montreal and Quebec. And like the ones that are in Vancouver. But you're not one of those women. You happen to be a Canadian woman that doesn't do nothing, that doesn't have an RV, that doesn't travel, that doesn't know how to cook, that doesn't show herself on video, that doesn't dress out and go out and eat or go to a club and meet people. You have no social life. Now, you live, you can live the way you want to live. I don't hate you for it. I don't agree with you for it. Uh, I don't. I'm not interested in you. I don't watch your content. I don't watch your life. I'm not interested in what you do. We have zero in common. So I don't know why you watch me because I have nothing in common with you. You know, you're the uh, person, the type of woman that I'm not interested in. I'm not interested in a woman, Lucy, who doesn't show herself on camera who's not an extrovert that goes out and dresses up. Uh, you're not a woman that likes to go out and dress up and go to a bar and mix and mingle with people and have a social life. You're not a woman who has an RV and tra uh, travels. You're not a woman who knows how to cook. And you're the typical homebody, ultra introvert, North American, American Canadian woman who just likes to stay at home, watch movies, eat popcorn, and play your cat and dog. I'm not into that. I'm not into playing with cats and dogs at home or watching movies or hate watching people on YouTube or, and all that kind of stuff. That's a pretty boring life. Again, you're the ultra introvert type, which many women are in America and Canada, like you. Ultra introverts, Lucy. No RV, no cooking skills, no fashion skills, no social skills, ultra introvert. Let me stay at home, play with my dog and cat, pop in some popcorn, sit on a couch, and hate on people online and hate on nomads. You don't have an RV, you have no travel bug, you've got nothing. Again, I don't hate you for it. I don't agree with you. I never want to date a woman like you. I never want to be a friend with a woman like you. It doesn't mean I hate you. We're all free to live whatever life we want to live. But I want to be friends with people who are nomads, who have RVs, who love to travel, who love to cook, who love to dress, who are social, love to go out and have a good time and live life, you know? And again, everybody in uh, Canada and America has freedom to live whatever life they want to live. If that's the life you want to live, and in Assyrian and Arabic, they say, Mato ma shepar. Live that life that you want to live. You're free. Now, I don't agree with you with your life. I would never want to be your friend or I'd never want to date a woman like you. Why? Because we have zero in common, zero interest in common. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to come online and hate you. If that's what you like to do, go for it. But don't come online and hate on me and criticize what I do just because you don't agree with me or just because you have no common interest in me. Understand, I don't understand, Lucy, why you watch me. I don't understand why you take my videos and make videos about me because we're not compatible. We'll never be friends. We'll never date. And I'm not interested in your content at all. So th that's what it is. People that I'm not interested in, I don't come on here and hate or talk about them. I just live my life. I don't talk about you, Lucy. I don't make videos about you. So I don't know why you watch me or maybe I don't watch your content, first of all. And I don't talk about you. So I don't know why you watch my content and why you make videos about me and why do you care about what I do or why why do you, um, how you doing, Mike? Uh, why do you care about what I do? Like I said, we'll never be friends, we'll never date, we have nothing in common. So 
don't watch me don't talk about me don't make videos about me because why because you're irrelevant in my life and I'm irrelevant in your life we'll never meet we'll never be friends and we'll never date we shouldn't hate each other we shouldn't talk about each other you live your life I live my life you stay in your lane I stay in my lane that's my message to you as far as Colleen is concerned in Hawaii uh, she keep, keeps on making videos about me um, doing her thing she keeps on making videos about me and uh, and uh, you know um, <clears throat> The bottom line is she's got nothing but negative energy anyway all the time. And like I said, Colleen, it's the same thing with you. Um, I don't talk about you. I don't watch you. I'm not interested in you. We'll never be friends. We'll never meet. You stay in your lane. I stay in my lane. I don't care what you do in your life. I could care less. I have no interest in listening to the frogs in your broadcast. I have no interest in the coffee farm. I have no interest in Hawaii. I have no interest in the kind of food that you cook. I have no interest in anything that you talk about. I have nothing in common with you either. I'm not interested in your Nissan Xterra. I'm not interested in the coffee farm. I'm not interested that you're from Central California. I'm not interested about your retirement. I'm not interested about anything about you. I don't hate you. Uh, or I don't like you. I have. You're irrelevant to me. Another person who's irrelevant to me that I'll never meet I'll never date, I'll never be friends with, and I'm not interested in your content. So again, you're another person who talks about me, who watches me. Why? Why do you waste your time? And lastly, what's his name? Vanatic Wolf Joe King. You've been a longtime troll of mine. And I got to admit, Joe King, Vanatic Wolf, you put all my videos up, or Just Darren, like these guys. But I'm not even going to talk about Just Darren, because he's just a hateful person and a waste of time, really, and... They're all hateful anyway, but you're irrelevant anyway, Judge Darren. But as far as Vanatic Wolf Joe King, it was fun when I was going up to Canada and Norm was giving me $500 a day and pissing you off. Um, that was really fun, and I made a lot of money. Because of trolls like you, Joe King, Vanatic Wolf, uh, you made me a lot of money on my on my side chats when I was streaming live because you would talk a lot of smack and the Norm would give money, and other people would give money too. Even since 20, uh, November of 2017, when Dave the Fisherman and um, uh, Kenny Guy came on and other people gave thousands of dollars. So people like you, Joe King, Vanatic Wolf, what you realize is when I was online, you made me a lot of money. Because by you coming on the side chat and talking smack, that just encouraged my fans to give me money and tick you off. So thank you for make, helping me make thousands of dollars on YouTube. Probably because of you, I made about 30 grand. And uh, that's how stupid you are, because instead of keeping your mouth shut and moving on, you have to come into my chats and talk a lot of smack, joking, fanatic wolf. And that just produced thousands of dollars in donations to piss you off and made me a lot of money. And I had a good time with the money that I made because all the money I made, I ate really good, traveled really good and lived a great life. Uh, as far as you taking my videos and putting them up, I don't care. I really could care less. And... All those people that watch those videos, whatever you people have to say, I would really, I really care. I don't care what you people say. You want to know why? Because you don't pay my bills. You don't run my life. I'll never meet you, and I'll never be friends with you people. And um, we have nothing in common. And I could care less what you do. So, so that's it. I don't have anything else to say, but. All in all, I just want to give people my opinions on the whole troll thing. Uh, again, trolls, hate, negativity, all that, to bunch it all up, I'll make it simple. I don't care if you're a man, you're a woman, you're a trend, whoever you are. If you're a troll, we'll ne we're, we're never going to meet. We'll never be friends. We'll never go out on a date. We'll, we don't have nothing in common. And you're irrelevant to me. Um, as far as the people that like me and love me and watch me, hello, hello, how you guys doing? Nice to see you guys. But as far as the haters out there, you're irrelevant to me. You're completely irrelevant. I could care less if you like me, if you disagree with me, whatever to do, I, I could care less. Again, why? I don't care if you're a man, woman, or trendy, whoever you are. 
whether you comment negatively on the side chats, whether you make videos about me, whether you take my videos and put them back up, I could care less. Again, you want to know why? And this goes simply standard for everybody. We'll never meet. We'll never be friends. You don't affect my life in any way, financially, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And at the same time, like I said, to close us off, I don't watch your content. And I don't care what you think or say about me. I could care less. Why? Because you're irrelevant to me. You don't control my life. You don't run my life in any way, shape, or form. I don't run your life in any way, shape, or form. We'll never meet. We'll never be friends. And we have nothing in common. And you're irrelevant to me like... Uh, like a fire ant is irrelevant to me. That's in a, a, a that's in a in, in a fire ant colony. You're just irrelevant to me as a cockroach or ant. That's the bottom line. With that being said, I don't even else have really more else to say. But I just wanted to put this out there for what it is. And uh, brass silver dog, um, you're not really a troll, but it is what it is. Uh, and you're out there making your videos, having your fun. But anyways, I'm just telling people my opinion about the old Tasha thing before I wrap this up. Tasha, um, I hope somebody takes her video and breaks it down and see if there's any other voices in there. Um, somebody who's audio expert and break the video down. But that was a little tribe of voice phenomenon at 34 minutes and 26 seconds of the video. Anyways, that's my opinion, guys, for what it is. That's pretty much all I got to say. Um, Mr. T, your content is pretty boring. You got an old panel. Your panel really sucks. And I don't really see your channel going anywhere. Really, it's just as boring as G Mangos was. And I'm probably going to unsubscribe and stop watching you. Bergs, I'm going to unsubscribe from you because you ain't got nothing either to watch. I'm not going to watch your stuff. And I'm not really watching anybody on the bottom of YouTube anymore because there's no, nothing entertaining. It's all just a bunch of hate. And uh, Mr. Cheese Chat, all you are is just a bunch of hate and hateful people and negative people. That's all it is. And that's why Bergs and Mr. T and all these other bottom of YouTube channels are never going to grow because they ain't got no content and all they got is just a bunch of hate. And they're not going to go anywhere. So that's about it. Uh, with that being said, I pretty much, that's all I got to say. Um, as far as Rosie goes, uh, Rosie mentions me from time to time here and there. Um, I don't really watch her channel anymore because there's nothing, nothing watched her. I mean, how many times are you going to see a person walking in a neighborhood or sitting behind their home on a cheap lawn chair? Just talking, 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 and people just watch 150, 200 people watching a bunch of junk. There's no content there. I don't watch it because there's nothing to watch. There's no, no, nothing to watch, you know. And uh, she mentions me from time to time. I don't know why she mentions me, but as far as Rosie goes, I ain't got no hard feelings for you, but we'll never be friends again, Rosie. We'll never meet. And we have nothing in common. So... I would appreciate, Rosie, if you keep my name out of your mouth. And don't mention me anymore. Because I hear you mentioning me from time to time. And I hope you don't. Like I said, I ain't got no hard feelings for you, but I'm never going to meet you again. We'll never be friends. And I moved on in my life, and you move on in your life. Just keep my name out of your mouth. And I don't really uh, hate you in any way. I just I just want to move on and have closure, so stop mentioning me. And stop talking, stop uh, just mentioning me. You don't really talk about me, but stop mentioning me because there's no, what's the point of mentioning me? Because we'll never be friends, we'll never meet again. And why do you want to mention me? We have nothing in common, basically. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Have a good day.